Hey, this is George Mazzell, Super Magnet Man, back to cover some more stuff to continue on with our Magnet University concept. What I want to do is cover magnetization and types of magnetization. Sometimes this gets to be a problem with customers and other times it, it introduces some opportunities and ways of using magnets that they have not thought of. And so I want to make sure we cover many of the different, different ways. There's still some even more exotic ways than some that I'll get to cover here. But for the most part, this will cover most people's needs for magnets. The most common way is what we call magnetized through the thickness. Magnetized through the thickness means we have the most surface area facing the subject that we're going to stick to. So if we're going to stick to a piece of metal and you want the maximum holding power, you really want to go for magnetized through the thickness if it'll fit because it gives us the length times the width, which is the greatest surface area that it's spreading the force out over. All right, this is what we're used to seeing and, and this is what you're accustomed to. When you get a magnet like this and it stacks up like this, that's magnetized through the thickness. Now, the other way is magnetized through the length. Magnetized through the length is where it sticks together like this and you focused all of your energy to a very small area. That's the smallest direction. In magnetization, you're actually going to get the highest flux concentrations on this small area because we've got so much length and pushing the magnetism over. The, the high gauss readings come from having more thickness or more length in this particular case. The third dimension is getting these magnetized across the width. When we magnetize them across the width, they look like this. Now they're sticking together on the edges. This gives us a long, thin edge that we are magnetized along. And when we stick it together, it puts an enormous amount of force on a very small area. This is what you might use for getting the maximum force. Some people making generators, making motors and things like this may use this design because using one of these focuses so much energy in one small area gives you a very good representation. So this covers our rectangles now. Now I'll take a look at ring magnets. Magnets. The ring magnets are a little bit different. It's always good to start off with like the bouncy magnets. I like the way the bouncy magnets work. This is using the ring magnets magnetized through the thickness. If I flip these around, of course, they would all stick together, but orienting them like this allows them to repel. And a lot of people who are looking for a good application where they're wanting to repel forces, I've had people looking at it from everything from seismographs to making uh, balance tables where they can put the rings on there and let them repel each other so that it floats in the air. It really doesn't achieve perfect flotation, but it takes a lot of the vertical load off of it when they're trying to push them together like this. All right. So this is magnetized through the thickness. The next way that we can magnetize the rings is across the diameter where they stick together like this. Now you can actually make them stick just like we did with the rectangles. They'll snap into position and look like they're magnetized through the thickness, but they're very weak because the poles are 90 degrees. It's actually on the side and these will snap together like this. So this gives you a different behavior for magnetism. Some common uses for this is when people need to put a ring magnet or a magnet on the side of a shaft. Let's say they've got an encoder that is counting the number of revolutions that the uh, magnet goes around. You can take a Hall sensor looking for the South Pole or the North Pole, mount this on the side of a shaft, and then when it spins, it's going to, every time it counts, it's going to count a revolution that this has gone around. Some other uses for it are in making galvanometers. People that make laser light shows and so forth will use variations of this technology magnetized across the diameter because it's easy to mount on a shaft and then it can spin very fast and they have the magnets making a motor or they can turn this around and instead of using the magnets to activate the signal, they can send electricity through the coils and it makes this into a very powerful and extremely high speed two pole motor. Now, in taking this one step further, I've had a lot of people who are interested in doing this with tube magnets, which is just a ring magnet made a little bit longer. Uh, first application that really came up with it was trying to find a way to make these typical screwdrivers. This is an attachment made to fit into the end of a drill. Then you take the magnet, and I always think it's pretty cool how it jumps on here. This jumps on. This gives us a way to hold screws in place and you can hold them horizontally or upside down, whichever way you want to hold them, this will hold it in place very well. And it, you can also reach into a bucket full of nails or screws or whatever and pull out a bunch of them with this on the end and it fits in place and holds very well. Well, we had some people who also wanted to use this in the galvanometers I mentioned earlier, and so they needed it magnetized across the diameter. If you take a look at this, you'll see how this is not sticking to the end, it'll only stick to the sides. 
If you take this and mount it on a shaft, then it spins around and you have an extremely powerful field in two places. And again, they usually use this in making a two-pole motor that's extremely fast. And some of the other people in the airplane, model airplane business, make and call this an in-runner. Instead of an out-runner where the magnets are on the outside, this is an in-runner where the magnets are on the inside and the copper is on the outside. Retrieves very, very high speed, very fast startup. It doesn't have as much inertia to get started because the radius is so, so much smaller. So this covers the basic ways of magnetizing a ring through the thickness and across the diameter. And so that's the, the main ways of doing this. I'm going to talk about radial again in just a minute. All right. The next thing we're going to look at is disc magnets. A standard disc magnet magnetized through the thickness sticks together like this and it makes a stack like this. It's like stacking up quarters, dimes, nickels, or Coca-Cola cans or anything like this. It stacks up vertically. We can also get these magnetized across the diameter. And some possible uses for this that I have had are people who want to embed these like in a door or in a window where they'll drill a hole. They want something that's round because a drill makes a round hole. You can put this in place, lock it to the outside, and then seal it in, and now you have a very, very powerful magnetic field on the edge that you can attract to from the outside, and it gives you sort of an invisible catch. So that's one way of using the magnetized across the diameter disc compared to magnetized through the thickness. Next, I'm going to talk about another type of magnet that I have, my little magnet ellipsoids. Now, an ellipsoid is sort of like a football. And these little magnets, when they snap together and make one of the bracelets that we have, these are magnetized across the short axis of the ellipse. And it makes a bracelet that fits together like this, and it takes a lot more of them because it's across the short axis of the ellipse. This one is magnetized through the length. It takes fewer, but it, and it fits together on your hand like this. It's made, and don't these look good? Yes, I think I need to start modeling jewelry somewhere. Uh, but anyhow, these ellipsoid magnets are magnetized along the long axis or along the short axis. Still the same thing, but with two different orientations. So make sure you look and you're getting exactly what you want in the way that you specify magnetization. Now you might want to take a minute and wonder, how do we have so many different ways of magnetizing? One of the things to cover is how the magnets are made. 